Hey guys, it's me, Eody Gaming here, and today I'll be teaching you about our build guide for Robin as well, and very nice of Hoivers to actually let us use the Creator Experience server to test Robin out so we can make better guides for us all. Uh, one thing to note, I have to give a quick disclaimer, is the content is still under development, anything can change, but chances are, might not be very, very high since in the official live stream, they already revealed her overall kit. Maybe a few numbers tweaking here and there, but should not affect the quality of build guides as well. So now, let's just jump straight into the point. What does she do? Let's talk about a very, very quick thing first. Her Basically, her entire kit revolves around her out ability, her ultimate ability. It does a few things. One, notice that Topaz is now on the number six. If I press the ultimate, it'll push your whole entire team up. As you can see, I only have two characters. So when I press the ultimate here, Topaz is immediately pushed to the front. And after she uses her ultimate in this singing, of course, it's a very light melody as well. But uh, once she uses that, your whole team pushes up and she enters this state over here. As you can see, it becomes this like singing state. Um, Robin is basically just unable to be like pushed forward. So if you have a Bronya on your team, you can't like push her up to make this go all the way up. It becomes like a lightning lord thing and this kind of thingy. Uh, and every time I attack an enemy, for example, I'm going to smack this guy here. You can see that there's an additional instance of physical damage that is of course done by Robin. One important thing to know or a few important things to note is that number is multiplied by physical damage bonus but it's not increased by follow-up attack bonus. So it's not considered a follow-up attack. Um, so just note that that will affect the builds that we have. So I'm just going to show you once more. And let's talk about the rest of her kit which really rolls into what relics we build and stuff like that as well. So if you go into here, her out ability, long wall of text, basically whatever we just said as, uh, over there. Skill, you want to always start off with this, but I started the rotation off with ultimate to like lead in faster so this YouTube video won't be too long. But you normally start off with a skill so that you are increasing the amount of damage that your whole team deals as quickly as possible. Um, she does have a 160 burst cost energy, which really ties into what builds I'm going to showcase um, for you guys as well. So all that out of the way, let's just go straight into the relics now, shall we? Let's go into the synthesis menu here, and I want to go into this screen. So, all of them I think I've tested, and I really like a few sets the most. You will see a lot of places recommending a two-piece Musketeer or Wild Beat, or, ev uh, or even like a four-piece Musketeer or Wild Beat for speed, but this is one of the rare characters that I actually do not like speed at all on this unit. Why do I say that? It's because um, she gets a 25% action advance in one of her minor trays for her to start the game. So she's going to move one of the first units on your account and her out is like a flat 90 speed. Speed multipliers do not give her anything. So it's going to be a largely a wasted stat, especially if you're trying to out as much as you can. It only helps when she's not in her out form, moving through the turn order. But I don't think that is much more useful. You might as well give her attack or physical damage bonus. So... Two-piece Masked Wild Beat, I think it's okay. You can go the two-piece of this dive, uh, Prisoner in Deep Confinement as well. It's nice to have. What I really, really like more is actually the Champion of Streetwise Boxing. Why? Uh, if you think about it, if you want the attack bonus so you can buff the whole team, 12 plus 12 is a 24% attack increase if you just do it very simple additive mats but this champion of street wise boxing is attack stacks five up to five times so if you attack or hit an enemy it stacks up to five times kind of thing and it goes all the way up to 25 percent which is more than a two piece two piece combo and it also increases physical damage bonus for individual damage as well so you get a more holistic rounding with champion of street wise boxing this will be my top pick for robin uh, other than that, if you don't really want the Champion of Streetwise Boxing, I think another very useful uh, stat to go for will be Watchmaker, Master of Dream Machinations. Especially if you do not have Runmei, you're trying to ease into a Brick Effect team. This is an, another example of a very strong build that you can consider because this gives you Brick Effect. Uh, it gives your whole team buffing as well. So other than that, like stuff that maybe your messenger traversing hackerspace is not very useful for her so you don't get this buff but the watchmaker you still at least get a bit of break effect that you can buff the entire team if you want to play her into break effect it's possible as well other than that the options that we mentioned you can't use ash blazing grand nuke because 20% uh, follow up attacks doesn't benefit her at all um and other than that, maybe you can consider that Pioneer Diver of Dead Waters, the two-piece with an attack percentage if you want to care about individual damage. But really, for the most part, Champion of Streetwise Boxing, as of now, is probably her best in slot. For the two-piece is where it starts getting varied a little bit. There are a few thoughts that I have that is running around. I think Sprightly Von Weck is one of the ones that are actually usable for her. Why do I say that is... As a character who have practically has no speed at all, 
this 40% action advance gains a lot more value because you don't want to build her too high speed. 120 is like just nice, not too slow, not too fast. She's a base, I think 105 with some minor traces that she gets that pushes her up to almost 120 already. Um, this allows you to act immediately, use your skill before any of your other characters go, regardless of how fast they are. If you're playing in hunt characters, they tend to be quite fast, like Topaz Nami, uh, Doctor Ratio. These are all generally faster moving units because they are hunt. This action advance helps you um, get a lot of value up in front as quickly as possible too. So, Spirely Volvac probably will be a pretty decent option. The other option that you have, of course, is Panically Land of Dreams if you're playing to a physical damage team with maybe Argenti, maybe with Clara, Susang, Luca, etc, etc. This is also very, very strong, Panically Land of Dreams. I would say that Panically Land of Dreams is probably more of a more specialized set in this case rather than Sprightly Von Weck, which is more generalistic. Uh, very rare that I will actually say that for a character. Uh, in Honkai Star Rail. But last but not least, I also want to recommend a Broken Kill. This is great if you want to give a bit more crit damage to your overall teams. Effect Rest, 10% is okay, but the crit damage increase of 10% I think is where it's very attractive. She already buffs quite a bit of crit damage, so following down that lines of giving even more to your overall team, I think it's very, very strong as well. Some other options. We have a two-piece space ceiling station. It gives you a bit of attack, 24% attack if you can't find the attack percentage as well because her buffing skills off with attack, her damage skills off with attack. So you want to go for stuff like that. Uh, other than that, I don't think there's much alternatives. You can go Fleet of Asia's if you're really looking for some HP survivability and attack percentage. But um, when we talk about substats, you'll realize that she's very easy to build. So I don't think you will need to find these kind of um, HP percentage in the main, in like the set bonus and stuff. Um, yeah, but that's basically my thought process for the like cones or the relics rather. Now let's talk about the substats and what am I actually going to look for or the main stats. Let's talk about main stats first. So two piece, I would be going for a physical damage bonus instead of attack. The the choice here is really clear. You can find attack percentage in the substats, whereas physical damage bonus is only found in the main stat. So you want to go for the one that's rarer and then ideally you want to get something in attack percentage in the substats as much as you can. Physical damage is more selfish, it boosts her damage. Attack percentage buffs her damage and the team to a lesser extent for every uh, because of diminishing returns of every stat that you get. So physical damage bonus for the planosphere. For the link rope, I think it's uh, going to be quite clear as energy restoration rate. I tried both attack percentage and energy restoration rate with her light cone in different teams. Without the energy restoration of 20% that the link the uh, link rope gives, is really very difficult to get her up very quickly in rotations. So I think energy restoration is a must. In fact, that's what, what makes me feel that Sprightly Von Weck as well as uh, Panically Land of Dreams is way better than uh, Broken Kill because of the additional energy you get to funnel into that 160 massive burst. Uh, but yeah, those are two of the main stats. Let's look at the others, the four piece now, and we'll go into Champion of Streetwise Boxing. For the feat here, some people are saying speed. They want to go for speed to hit that 120 threshold. I personally think attack is all you need because when you go for attack main stat, chances are you're able to find speed in the subs to hit that 120 threshold if you're running Space Ceiling Station or Sprightly Von Weck or any other gear that requires you to hit 120. It's not very hard to hit 120 speed with just a few subs for a character like Robin. Attack percentage probably will be my, my recommendation. And my body, I'll go for attack percentage here as well. You don't really need crit on this character. Um, and for the sub stats, I think that um, but the best place for sub stats, I guess, is the body because it has most subs here in the game. She wants, you can get a little bit of speed. You can get the, the highest priority. Let's start with that. Highest priority is attack percentage. You want to go for that. Uh, HP defense is not bad as well. I want survivability. Speed is also not bad. I'll take speed as, as well. The rest of the stats doesn't matter. Crit rate, crit damage doesn't matter. Uh, break effect doesn't matter on this character too much as well. Um, so just go for attack percentage, a little bit of speed, and HP, defense, all are generally quite good. So she's a very, very cheap character to build overall. So that is my relic recommendations. Now let's go on to something more fun, which is probably going to be the light cone section. And let me just go into the character screen here real quick. And let's go into the light cones. Um, so, of course, her signature light cone is going to be very strong. I will make another video on her signature light cone and how versatile is it in a bit. Uh, if you have this, of course, get it. But let's give you some options as well in this section here. I think one that I really, really like is probably But the Battle Even Isn't Over. Uh, Bronya's light cone. Why do I say that is 
for Robin, she's a character that wants to do damage, a lot of damage. So you want to have very high amounts of attack on this character. So 3.7k is what I have on this screen um, with a 5-star light cone that gives me 529 base attack. So very massive base attack and it gives me what I need, energy restoration rate to help me hit that threshold quicker. Sometimes you would be like full of energy before you actually finish the, the loop and well, that's a nice problem to have rather than having not enough energy when the, the her singing ends and stuff like that. So you get some skill point refunds here and there, some additional damage, but the main thing is the stats, the energy, very synergetic with her overall kit. So that is one angle you can go and not everyone of course has that. So let's talk about a few other alternatives. Where is my... Um, I think this is probably one of the first times that I think the Carve the Moon with the Clouds is very strong because as you can see here, this is a battle pass light cone unfortunately, but it has very very high 4 star stats for a harmony light cone. It's like a 4.5 star if you think about it. Attack here is only 50 or like roughly 10% less than Bronya's sig uh, signature light cone, the standard shop one. So you get 50, slightly less energy, but the effect here is also very very good. It's a 4 star, so very affordable in that sense I would say if you argue that you can argue that 15 or 10 bucks is, is not affordable but uh, all allies attack increased by 10% very nice you have crit damage increased by 12% which plays into her gimmick anyway she wants to buff the entire team's crit damage and at the same time she also gains energy regeneration rate of 6% so every single of these three lines benefits Robin regardless so if you don't mind spending 10 bucks 15 bucks this is a very very good safe alternative with good stats good general effect that regardless of what it is, um, it's very, very strong for her too. So that is another one. Let's go into more cheaper alternatives now, shall we? Because it's been like so expensive so far. Um, one of them that of course you could consider, especially if you don't run too many of the follow-up characters, you don't have that much energy. One option is to run Mashing Cox. But again, I don't think you get too much value out of this because she's is very, very slow. So it cannot be repeated in a single turn um, then again, you don't know, she can't really attack too much unless she gets hit non-stop, then you need to have a better sustain and stuff like that. Uh, but I have to test this one out a bit more. Main reason why I don't like this too much off the top of my head already is that the attack is very, very low. 317 attack with very, very squishy HP. This is not really a very, very nice light cone for me, in my opinion, because your damage buffing will be mediocre, super mediocre, and you will be very, very squishy and you are like vulnerable in that state. So I don't really like it too much. Um, next up, we have, let's talk about a few other options. Of course, you have Planetary Rendezvous, which gives same type damage. This is really, really very fantastic. If you're playing into physical teams together with uh, um, no, Panacony Land of Dreams, you get another 10% there. Um, you don't need Dance, 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 one of the rare Harmony characters that don't require this. So that's pretty nice. Um, Memories of the Past is really better used on Runme. You don't really need it here on her as well. Um, and other than that, I don't think there's too much else. Even the free light cone here is not very fantastic. But the one that's interesting to look out for is the event light cone that is coming up in version 2.2 that they teased a little bit in the live stream. So we will want to check that out a little bit more over there. And last but not least, a few of a breathful. But if you are looking for teams for Robin, I will highly recommend you check out this video right here. But I'm just going to give you a teaser probably her best team will look something like this as of time of recording this is probably going to be one of her strongest teams if you want a variety of teams other ways to play robin check out this video in the end screen i think you'll find it very useful as well and thank you guys so much for watching see you in the next video